You've heard of counterfeit dollars. You've heard of counterfeit luxury goods, handbags, things like that. Today, we're talking about counterfeit cheese. Hi there, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is Plain English lesson number 610. Here at Plain English, we help you upgrade your English with stories about what's going on in the world. That means you listen to us and you'll learn about English and, as an extra bonus, you'll also learn about the world. And we go at the right speed for you. Now, how do I know this is the right speed for you? Because there are two speeds. There's the slower speed, which you're hearing now, and the faster speed. You pick the one that's right for your level. If you're listening to the slower version and you'd like to speed things up, then come check us out at plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S, and you can get the fast version of every lesson plus tons of other English learning resources. All right, today's story is going to make your mouth water. Parmigiano Reggiano. My Italian members will tell me if I'm saying that right. Parmigiano Reggiano is a high quality type of cheese made in Italy using methods many hundreds of years old. But the world is flooded with counterfeit Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Counterfeiters charge high prices but deliver a fake product. To fight back, cheesemakers are embedding microchips in their authentic cheese. You'll get the full story on today's lesson. In the second half of the lesson, we'll talk about the English expression bear resemblance, and we have a quote of the week. Let's dive in. Today, we're talking about counterfeit cheese. But before we do, it's important to know the difference between counterfeit products and imitation products. A counterfeit product is intended to deceive the consumer and it's theft of a brand's intellectual property. Think of all of the fake Gucci sunglasses or Louis Vuitton bags. An imitation product, however, is a product that's made to look as much like the original as possible, but does not present itself as the original. A counterfeit is illegal, an imitation is not. What does this have to do with cheese? Parmigiano Reggiano is a type of cheese. It's nutty, sharp, and salty. Parmigiano Reggiano is a protected name and product under European Union law. Like champagne from France, no food can be labeled Parmigiano Reggiano, if it does not come from specific regions in the north of Italy. Furthermore, Parmigiano Reggiano must follow the 900 year old cheese making tradition from the region. The milk used to make it must be produced in the region from cows that live in the region, and the cows must be fed only food grown in the region. Parmigiano Reggiano must be aged for a minimum of 24 months, and there are other requirements. Real Parmigiano Reggiano is delicious. It bears little resemblance to the powdery stuff 
in the grocery store, or on the table at an American pizzeria. That's because Parmesan cheese is a general category, not a protected name. Parmesan cheese at the store is an imitation, not a counterfeit. It's definitely not as good. It's cheap, but at least it's not pretending to be something that it's not. The real stuff can cost twice as much as even high-quality Parmesan cheese made elsewhere. Europe takes its food labeling seriously. If a product is labeled Parmigiano Reggiano, you know you're getting cheese made according to exacting standards, or at least. You should know that. Unfortunately, counterfeits are a real problem. Counterfeiters label their product Parmigiano Reggiano and charge high prices for it, even though they don't follow the cheesemaking tradition from the north of Italy. How can they get away with this? The counterfeiters can do this because the food labeling is an analog process. Like a Gucci logo, the Parmigiano Reggiano labels can be faked and applied to the rind of any wheel of cheese. There's nothing to guarantee that the label hasn't been falsified. In fact, the cheese producers in Italy estimate that the market for counterfeit cheese is almost as big as the market for the real product. But now, cheese makers in Italy are fighting back. They are using QR codes and microchips to authenticate. Their cheese wheels. Here's how it works: the rind of the cheese is the hard outer shell that protects the large wheels. A label made of milk protein goes on top of the cheese wheel. The label has a QR code that identifies the wheel. And a small microchip is inserted into the label. The microchip contains information about where the cheese was produced. As the wheels move through the supply chain, the wheels can be tracked and registered. That way, a buyer of a wheel. Of Parmigiano Reggiano can scan the chip and verify the wheel's authenticity. So when we talk about microchips in cheese, we're not talking about chips hidden in the cheese that a consumer would eat. And since there's only one chip per. 40 kilogram wheel, it doesn't directly protect or affect individual consumers, but importers, restaurants, and wholesalers should, in the future, be able to scan the chip to make sure that the wheel of Parmigiano Reggiano that they're buying. And paying a premium for is legitimate. One more thing: this is food, so the label and the chip must be edible, or at least not harmful. The label with the QR code is made of casein, a type of milk protein. 
The chip is also harmless. It's the size of a grain of salt. It's made by a company called P Chip, based in Chicago. The company has tested the chip and found it's safe for humans. The company that makes the chips was also concerned, and this is funny. They were concerned about people worrying that they might swallow a chip, and then someone could track them with the microchip. So, like, you go to a nice Italian restaurant, your pasta dish comes with grated Parmigiano Reggiano. You swallow a chip, and now a nefarious actor can trace your movements. The company swears that's not possible. The chips can't be read remotely. You need to scan them up close, and you can't scan one that might be in a human's digestive system. And also, the chip would probably not be in your system for too long. But to assuage public concerns, the CEO of the company ingested one of his own microchips. He feels fine. He said that nobody is tracking him except his wife, but she uses other methods. Here's a quote of the week for you. Thomas Edison is best known as the inventor of the light bulb, and today's quote is from him. He says, "A genius is often merely a talented person who has done all of his homework." One more time from Thomas Edison: "A genius is often." Merely a talented person who has done all of his homework. Next up, we've got a hard one today. Bear resemblance is the expression in today's lesson. Bear resemblance is an expression we can use when saying one thing. Is similar to another thing in appearance or other characteristics. This is one of those strange expressions where you can use bear resemblance, bear resemblance, just like that. But you often use another word in the middle, a modifier, like bear's strong resemblance or. Bears little resemblance, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just start with bear resemblance. Let's say we have two things, and we want to say one reminds you of another. They aren't exactly alike, but they are similar in some respects, especially in appearance. Have you ever looked at a euro banknote? They have illustrations of bridges and architecture, things like that. Have you ever tried to identify the landmark that's displayed on a euro banknote? If you have, you might have had some trouble. That's because the images on euro notes. Are not images of real bridges and real windows and real buildings. They're illustrations that bear resemblance to real places. The central bank decided to print generic images that bear resemblance to the styles you find in many places in Europe. And we'll talk more about that in a future lesson. So that's bear resemblance. But as I said before, 
we often put a modifier in there. So let's look at a few modifiers. Bear strong resemblance means to seem very much like something else. The U.S. has a new branch of its armed forces. It's called the Space Force. Just like we have an army, a navy, an air force, now we have a space force. And in 2020, the Space Force got a logo. I mean, you can't have a branch of the armed services without a logo. And the U.S. Space Force logo bears a strong resemblance to the Starfleet Command logo used in the Star Trek television series. The Space Force logo bears a strong resemblance to the Star Trek logo. That means the Space Force logo looks a lot like the Star Trek logo. The creator of Star Trek tweeted an image of it and said he's expecting a royalty payment. John Madden was a legendary football player, coach, and broadcaster, American football. And there's a comedian who does imitations. His name is Frank Caliendo. And when he does his imitation, Frank Caliendo's voice bears a strong resemblance to John Madden's voice. They sound very much alike, and the imitation is very funny. Bear little resemblance goes the other way. That means there is very little in common between two things. And that's how I used it today. True parmigiano Reggiano cheese follows a strict manufacturing process and must come from one region in Italy. Only three ingredients are allowed. But Parmesan cheese is a general category. You can make that anywhere. Today, I said that the powdery Parmesan cheese you buy at the grocery store bears little resemblance to authentic Parmigiano Reggiano. That means there are very few similarities between the two. They're not total opposites. They're in the same category. They're both food. They're both cheese. But the point is they have very little in common. Apple Computer was founded in 1976. The first mass-produced product was the Apple II. It was this massive beige box with a gray keypad. Apple still makes computers today, but the computers that Apple makes today bear little resemblance to those first models which were sold in the 1980s. Again, they're in the same category. Both the MacBook Pro today and the Apple II of the 80s, they're both computers, but they don't have much in common. Today's MacBooks bear little resemblance to the Apple IIs of before. You can say bear some resemblance if there is some similarity. When I was a kid, I used to go to Yankee Stadium, a famous baseball stadium in the Bronx, New York. 
The Yankees had many good years there, but they didn't want to play in an old stadium forever. So they tore that one down and built a new one. The new stadium bears some resemblance to the old one. The field dimensions are the same, the colors are similar, the general architecture has a similar look and feel, but of course, it's all modern and updated. They did a good job of making the new stadium seem like an updated version of the old one. It also honors the history of the old stadium while having all the amenities that we expect today. So the new stadium bears some resemblance to the old one. Finally, bear a striking resemblance can mean you're surprised by how close the comparison is. Some people say that the actress Emma Corrin bears a striking resemblance to Princess Diana, who she plays in the Netflix show The Crown. That means people were surprised by how closely she looked like, behaved like, sounded like, seemed like the real Princess Diana. They say that in The Crown, the actress Emma Corrin bears a striking resemblance to the real Princess Diana. That was a tough one, right? Well, they can't all be easy. You don't have to use this one a whole lot, but it's a good one to have in your toolkit and pull out once in a while. All right, that's all for Plain English today. This was lesson number 610. So remember, the full lesson is available at plainenglish.com slash 610. We'll be back on Thursday and we'll pick up a topic I introduced in the expression section of today's lesson. I told you that the Euro banknotes have illustrations that bear resemblance to actual places, but they're not actual places. Well, the Euro banknotes are in for a redesign, and we'll talk about that on Thursday. 